Hi everyone, my name is Morgan. I'm the graduate assistant for the Writing Center and a lot of you probably already know me, but for those who don't, I'm a writing tutor who works specifically to help other graduate students. I am also a fellow graduate student. I'm finishing up my final year right now. Um, but yeah, so I was asked today to just sort of provide a video walking through some possible steps, advice, and some examples on how to change your annotated bibliography that you all completed recently into a late review. The process can be a little difficult or confusing for people who have never done it before, so I'm just here to offer some general advice. Of course, this won't work for everyone. Everyone has different learning styles and processes and things that they like to do. So if none of these work for you, that's fine. Take and pick and choose what might work. Um, and if it's not helpful at all. Totally welcome to come work with me specifically through the Writing Center or other tutors and we can figure out something that'll work best for you. So yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I have a little PowerPoint ready to go with some examples of my own from my own annotated bib and my lit review process that I've kind of worked on for another class, just as kind of a visual example. I'm a big visual person. Um, and to kind of start, I often because I'm a visual person, I use a very visual aid in terms of a uh, funnel or an upside down triangle in terms of what does a lit review look like. Um, and I describe it as a top down or general to specific process. The reason why we do this is that we're kind of leading the reader uh, from a general topic and giving them some you know, broad definitions, just explaining to them like they don't, you know, if they're unfamiliar with it, like here's my topic, here's some general information about it. And as they read more, they're going to become more and more of an expert based on this research that you're providing and say, okay, here's my general topic. Here's a little bit more specific stuff about the demographics and the symptoms. And based on all this information, here is a conclusion that I've come to. Uh, that's just kind of a visual aid that I like to use. It doesn't work for everyone, but it's something that I've really found helpful. Um, but the first thing that we're going to do from your annotated bib, we're going to look at your article summaries in general from big picture and kind of see what are the reoccurring themes and main topics that were identified in your research. So things that all the articles or a few of the articles at least found a couple different times. And so as an example, I have my own paper here. I list out a couple articles. And so I kind of went through and was like, OK, I saw, you know, reoccurring themes of like a sibling relationship, the gender of siblings, um, and like if, it, you know, the age of the subject, whether it was early adolescence or late adolescence. So those are just kind of like after going through, I found those to be reoccurring themes and topics that I was like, OK, cool, I can go with this. Um, and from there, we're going to take those main themes, kind of condense them down, refine them a little bit, and turn them into possible subsection topics or headings for your lit review. Um, you probably saw this in your own research while you were reading. In lit reviews, they often will break it down into variables or subsection topics. So similar process here. Uh, as an example of my basic outline of my lit reviews often look like this. I'm a big fan of bullet points. Um, and I just kind of plotted out what my variables would look like. And so I've had the variables written out and I had some general thoughts in terms of, okay, this is sort of the information about this variable that I read in my research and just kind of plotting those down just tentatively to see how I want my paper to be laid out. Um, and then this is the next step that I find is still pretty helpful, at least for a lot of students, we're going to take our or article summaries and kind of just copy pasting or cutting or listing them underneath those variables. And so what I mean by that is identify your variable that you want or your subsection topic. And I usually just kind of place to some extent like, oh, article one really talked really well about this and maybe article four and so on. So I'll just kind of list and plot those articles out in the spot where I think they fit. Um, in terms of the variable. Uh, and I do that just as a way for me to visualize what the layout of my paper is going to look like. So I have these two sections. I know I talk about these articles here and here. That's just helpful for me, not helpful for everyone, but it's one way to kind of go about organizing your paper and splitting up those articles. Um, and the reason we do this uh, especially when you determine the order of your subsection topics, is we want that kind of general to specific format that I talked about earlier. We want to introduce our reader to our topic as a whole, give them definitions, and then same thing with the variables. Start kind of general, being like, okay, this is what sibling relationships look like. Here are the factors that influence it, um, including gender, uh, whether what position they're in um, and just stuff like that. And the goal of it is to start general and work specifically down to our major conclusions 
from the research as a whole. So research says this, this, and this, based on this information, I'm going to make this assumption or this proposal, or this answers my question that I asked in the beginning of my paper. The whole point is to just find our way with our information to that final conclusion. Um, and this is reflected again in this visual where I talk about that upside down triangle or the funnel where we start general and work, you know, what's known, um, what is research typically found, what are the specific variables, how does it relate to your topic. Yeah. Now, here is where we get to turning the written uh, content of the annotated bib into a lit review. And essentially, uh, synthesize is a really common way to talk about this. So instead of listing Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, and not interacting them at all with each other, we're going to synthesize. So instead of basic summaries, synthesizing means you're going to take the meat, essentially, or the real important information from one article, and you're going to compare and contrast it to another article. And that's essentially what's happening. We have, as an example, down here, uh, I have my, uh, this is from my actual thesis that I'm kind of working on, um, so ignore it if it doesn't match with the previous text, um, but I have my variables kind of lined out and I've started actually like talking about the most important parts from the annotated bib, the results, the like implications. And I'm kind of comparing and contrasting them in terms of were the articles similar? Did they find, have similar results? Did they find different results? What were possible reasons why their results were different? Were their implications and recommendations different based on this variable at the top? Um, and so this is where you kind of really get to break apart the summary that you have and pick those important parts and throw them together here. And you wanna just compare and contrast essentially what research has to say on your topic just providing the reader with a general understanding of, I understand what the major results of this topic are. Um, and we kind of do this for a couple of reasons because we want the major conclusions from the late review, especially at the end, to bring to the final conclusion of overall, overall what has research found on your topic? Uh, and how does this relate to your proposal, your question, your hypothesis, whatever it is you're doing? In this case, for all of you, your final conclusion is based on the findings from your late review and your variables. How does the research apply or impact rehabilitation counselors or mental health counselors? And so if I had uh, was discussing fibromyalgia and it's how it affects people, I would start with defining what fibromyalgia is, what the symptomology looks like, how does it affect people in the workplace? Um, and then at the end, based on these findings and all everything about uh, fibromyalgia and how it affects people, how does it affect rehabilitation counselors and mental health counselors in their work? And that's essentially the final conclusion we're going to come to. Uh, but yeah, of course, like I said, this doesn't work for everyone, but these are just some general thoughts and ideas and things that might work. But like I said in the beginning, if this doesn't work for you, uh, feel free check out uh, the, our website, the Writing Center website, and you can always make more appointments with me or other tutors, um, and we can find a process that works well for you, and it can be whatever you'd like. The appointments really are tailored to you specifically in terms of what works for your learning style, um, or even if you just have questions about the process or articles, um, it's whatever is gonna best help you. But yeah, uh, I hope that was helpful to some extent, but of course, feel free to contact me or the Writing Center if you have any questions. All right, thank you.